thank you. Um, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about uh, our work. So I will talk about SABIRK, which is a database we are developing for more than 15 years now. And uh, I will introduce you a new visualization we developed to get a better overview about the data. Um, so SABIRK is a database about biochemical reactions and their kinetic properties. Um, so we have, so you see here some, some numbers. We have some velocity constants and substrate parameters like EM and inhibitor parameters. And these data are extracted manually from publications. So at the moment we have about 8,000 publications. And um, so these, these data are very important, uh, especially for modelers, because they want to run simulations with these kind of data. But it's also uh, interesting for, for experimentalists to get uh, um, the, the uh, information about evidence of an enzyme or protein in, in, uh, in a pathway. And this data, oh, sorry, there's something happened with this slide here. Um, so this, this data are related to reactions, so defined by substrates and product, but also enzyme information and organism tissue cell location. And what you cannot see here is that these data are also dependent on, for example, the pH value or the temperature. And... Um, so this is just a very simple example, so these are no real data, just to show you that how multidimensional these data are. So at the moment, or in the past, we had um, table-like uh, information in our database or entry views. And in, in a table, you have something like this, you have an, an enzyme, and you have different values, so this is a velocity constant, key cat, and then you have different pH and temperatures, different organisms and tissues. And it's hard to get an overview about this data um, because you can just sort the columns, but you cannot get an overview about that. And that's why we, we developed some, some um, visualization concepts. And one is um, parallel, which is called parallel coordinates, which brings this data together. So it's sorting the data and uh, each each of these lines is representing one entry in our database. And um, now I will show you how this looks like in our database. So we have three different concepts of visualization now. One is a heat map overview. So you can, these are, are co like columns uh, in a table and each line is representing one entry and you can sort these data, you can select these data, and um, so one is this heat map overview, the other one are parallel coordinates, like I showed you before in this very simple example. And then you can see that, for example, this specific enzyme, um, you have a variety of, of uh, pH values, and then you can select, for example, a specific range of pH and temperature, and then you can define your search and you can easily get an overview, of, for example, at which pH or which temperature this enzyme was measured. And um, I will show you some examples. So SABIRK is linked from the Uniprot database. So if you go to the cross-references or external links in, in Uniprot, then you would find SABIRK here. And if you click on this, then you would end up in our database. And uh, the database is then searched by this Uniprot ID, for example, this one here. And then you would get an overview about, for this specific um, protein, you would get an overview about the data which are stored in our database. And you can see here, this is, of course, we, there are not so many entries like I showed you in the example before. And, um, but you are immediately get an overview about the pH and temperature distribution, also which tissues are uh, related to, to some data. Uh, so, of course, the organism. And, and on the right-hand side, you see the kinetic parameters. So we have a second uh, a graph for these parallel coordinates where you see the distribution of values. So, for example, I use the KiCad value here. And you see that there's some distribution and there are some you can maybe define some clusters, and the same you can also see on the scatter plot. So this is the third visualization we have, and you see that, so here on the left-hand side you have the temperature, and these are all the values, and all the values are at, at um, temp uh, a temperature um, 25 degrees, but there's only one single one which is at another temperature. 
So with this kind of visualization, you are much faster to find outliers or clusters of your data. And then if you click on that, then you can also see the value, for example. And you can, uh, for example, then select, as I showed before, you can select uh, parts of these graphs. They are all connected with each other and um, define your query. And another example of an um, outlier, for example, uh, is um, this Uniprot ID here. So where you also have a distribution of values and then you see that um, some data are in, in this area, so these are again the temperature and the value itself. And there's one which is really out of the others. You can also see that here, so they cluster here, and there's one value which is an outlier. So what's the definition of an outlier? Of course, an outlier could also have, it doesn't have to be an error, um, but um, there are different reasons for, for outliers. So there could be, of course, a curation error. So we, we found with that examples, we found errors that, for example, the curators or the students who are inserting our data, they used the wrong unit. Instead of uh, micromolar, they used millimolar. And then, of course, you, have an, you can easily find this outlier if, if, if all the other values are smaller. Um, but there are also errors in the publications. So, for example, they already used the wrong unit for value in the publication, um, or they have different experimental conditions, so like different buffers, which are not represented in this view, or, for example, different um, quality of the experimental setup. So, for example, if the protein in the publication is not, it's not highly purified, then you could have a different value. Or, for example, if the temperature is not exactly defined, because we often found in in publications, something like room temperature, which could mean several things between 20 and 40 degrees. Um, and there are also, of course, missing information in the publications. Um, so to summarize, so this new visualization should get, for, for the users, it uh, should give you a um, quick overview about the data in sub -OK. Um You can define the query in more detail with this visualization. Um, you can find patterns or outliers, and um, you can also find experimental conditions. For example, if most of the data are measured at a specific pH or temperature, then it's maybe um, uh, yeah, important or to, 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 uh, to know that. And um, what's also nice, for, for example, for publications, you can also export these screenshots, these graphs. And for curators, for us, it's also important because we can easily find outliers, which are maybe creation errors in our database. So it also helps us to improve our database. Um, this, um, or this, this new visualization is published in database recently, and uh, there's also a poster we can uh, discuss on that in more detail. And I would like to thank my colleagues, especially Dothea Dudash, who developed this and implemented that in the database. And yeah, our founders, of course. So if you have any questions, we can also later talk at the poster. <laughs> Thank you.